Today we're going to look at some background information that might help you on your way to understanding Lorraine Hansberry's A Raisin in the Sun. So we look at the theme of the American dream. What is it to be the American dream? Is it an idea? Does it involve owning material things? And are there ethnic, social, and economic implications? You're going to be asking a lot of these questions as you read her play. So when we start off with the play, usually with Lorraine Hansberry, you should probably also look a little bit at Langston Hughes, specifically at his uh, poem called A Dream Deferred. She talks about, in more than one interview, how this particular play, A Raisin in the Sun, was inspired by Langston Hughes and specifically this poem. So let's go ahead and check out the poem A Dream Deferred by Langston Hughes. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? So Lorraine Hansberry took the title of Raisin in the Sun from another line in Langston Hughes' famous poems, his 1951 poem, Harlem. Harlem captures the tension between the need for black expression and the pos impossibility that that expression can have because American society was oppressing its black population at the time. Now, in the poem, Hughes asks whether a dream deferred or a dream put on hold withers up like a raisin in the sun. His lines will confront the racist and dehumanizing attitude prevalent in American society before the civil rights movement started in earnest in the 1960s. Now, Lorraine Hansberry's reference to Hughes' poem in her play's title highlights the importance of the dreams in The Raisin in the Sun and the struggle that her characters face to realize their individual's dreams, a struggle that's tied to the more fundamental black dream of equality in America. So when we take a look at the play, a lot of times you should probably look a little bit more into the background of the civil rights movement. You might be asking, well, what was the civil rights movement? What was the main goal of this movement? And were there any other movements during the time period? Well, a little bit of background. This particular play was published in 1959, and that was four years after Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to give up her seat to a white person on a bus. Now, they do say that was one of the major things that sparked the civil rights movement. Hansberry's play also illustrates black America's struggle to gain equal access to opportunity and their expression of cultural identity in the United States at the time. So sentiments of a raisin in the sun will be echoed by Martin Luther King in his later speeches, his marches, and his rallies in the 1960s. So we take a look at some of his more famous lines, like in his famous I Have a Dream speech. He says that I have a dream, a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. And some of his more famous lines. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Well, we also have more lines from that particular, uh, particular speech. Uh, he says, I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And continue out that same paragraph, he also says, I have a dream where little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls and walk together as sisters and brothers. So then we ask, well, how does King help develop the idea of the American dream? And what does he do to the existing American dream? Since he's one of the famous leaders of the, the beginnings of that civil rights movement, the idea of the American dream, not only expressed in Lorraine Hansberry's A Raisin in the Sun, but also in Martin Luther King's famous I Have a Dream speech, we do see this sense of a, a certain uh, part of American society saying, it's our turn. When is our American dream going to be realized? And so King is going to develop that idea with this very famous speech. 
gave it in front of tens of thousands of people, and of course, it is usually common literature in high schools today. So let's take a look at the author Lorraine Hansberry. She was born in 1930 in Chicago, and unfortunately, she died in 1964 uh, of cancer. She's the daughter of a prominent real estate broker and the niece of a Harvard University professor of African history. So fortunately, at least for her, she did have a good education and was able to uh, create a play and actually be able to uh, express her, her hopes, her dreams, and a little bit of the oppression that, that she felt um, as she was growing up in Chicago. And A Raisin in the Sun would be her first play. She originally titled it A Crystal Stair, from yet another Langston Hughes poem, and it was first produced in 1959. Now, it's usually known as the moving on up morality play of the 1960s. And again, if you don't know what a morality play means, it usually uses allegorical characters to teach the audience moral lessons, almost a stereotyping of certain types of characters, so the audience almost instantly can relate to these particular characters. So what is in the plot? We don't want to give a lot away because you should be preparing to actually read the play. But the plot basics are that you're going to explore the struggles of ordinary people trying to achieve their desires. It is the story of the younger family, their South Side Chicago family, trying to survive in very cramped quarters in their apartments. And Mama is going to get a $10,000 check from her husband's life insurance policy. And when they do so, they consider moving to a larger house in a white suburb of Chicago. Taking a look quickly at the cast of characters, uh, when you take a look at who received the $10,000 check, that would be Lena Younger. She's known as Mama in the play. She's a God-fearing mother of the main character, Walter. And she refuses to give up in the face of adversity. If there is something that goes against her wishes, if there's something that would go against her uh, desires, she's not going to give up. She is going to face that adversity. Your main character is going to be Walter Lee Younger. He's a 35-year-old chauffeur who longs to improve himself to reap the same rewards that he sees other people, particularly white people, enjoying. And he has a wife by the name of Ruth. She is very devoted to him and the family. She has a tendency to be a bit more humble than her husband. Benitha is Walter Lee Younger's sister. She's 26 years of age at the time. She's very articulate and she's a very ambitious college student. She has been trying out all these different uh, majors. She's been trying out all these different hobbies. So she is very articulate, but she's still in college because she doesn't know what she exactly wants to be. But she hopes someday to become a physician at the time we start our play. Walter and Ruth happen to have a younger son. His name is Travis. He's very friendly. He's probably 10, maybe 11 years of age. And you're also going to meet in Acts 2 and 3, Mr. Lidner. He's a white man who attempts to prevent the youngers from moving into his neighborhood. Remember, Lena Younger, or Mama, has received a $10,000 check, and she's hoping to use most of that in order to put down a down payment on a house in Mr. Lidner's neighborhood. Our other characters that we have that are going to affect your characters are Joseph Asagai. He's a cultured, well-spoken Nigerian uh, who goes to the same college as Benitha, and they start hanging out, and he would like to date her. He starts courting Benitha. Benitha, however, at the time is also dating George Murchison. He is from Chicago. He is from a wealthy African-American family. Uh, Bobo happens to be Walter's friend. They are planning to open a liquor store with another business partner by the name of Willie. And unfortunately, Willie's going to run off with Walter and Bobo's money. Now, you're never going to meet Willie. He has no speaking part in the play. But we're going to hear about Willie through Walter and Bobo's uh, conversations about him. Lastly, there's a very small part called the furniture mover. He comes to the younger's apartment to move their new belongings over to their new house. So then we ask, well, what is the theme? What should we be looking for in this particular play? There's a lot to unpack. Uh, as we look for the ideas of faith and family, remember Mama, uh, Lena Younger, is a God-fearing woman. You're going to be hearing her talk about that idea of faith and overcoming adversity. 
Uh, the idea of family, we're going to look at that first page of characters and see that we have this sense of a three-generation family. We've got the grandmother, we've got the uh, parents, we have a sister to uh, Walter, and we do have the son, uh, Travis. So family ties, family bonds are definitely a theme here. The idea of compromise, the idea where we all have our dreams, we all want our desires, but maybe perhaps some of us have to wait, some of us have to work harder, there's going to be this sense of compromise that you'll be seeing. The evils of racial prejudice. Mr. Lindner is the only uh, white man that happens to be in this particular play, and you're going to hear some lines from him that might be a bit uncomfortable. Uh, when this was being written in the, and performed in the 1950s, uh, probably even as you would hear today, there are some uncomfortable things he's going to say about having the younger family move into his prominently white neighborhood. The idea of money can't buy happiness. That is a common theme that you see throughout quite a few plays, quite a few uh, novels and stories. Uh, the idea where if you have money, everything is going to be great. Uh, that's not how money works. Uh, money can only just push away certain problems. And certainly here in this particular play, money is going to create some problems. And lastly, the idea of the importance of dreams. We've been going through the idea of Lorraine Hansberry being uh, related to Martin Luther King and his I Have a Dream speech later on, and then of course being inspired by Langston Hughes and all of his poetries and the ideas of dreams. How people have desires, how they have dreams, and how they would like to see them come into reality. So symbolism. What is a symbol in this particular play? We're going to see a few of them. Mama has a plant. Lena Younger has a plant that she's been trying to take care of in their apartment that gets absolutely no light. But my goodness, the plant is still attempting to survive. Uh, even with all of the stress and mayhem that happens in this play, we see once and again that she goes back and cares for and nurtures the plant. As unhealthy as the situation it is, that plant is still surviving. The kitchen window, you're going to see Ruth, the wife of Walter, and you're also going to see Mama quite often go over to the kitchen window to go find themselves some air, to go find themselves some light. It's the only place in this apartment that they can find light and air. It has that bit of sense of freedom, that sense of positivity, that sense of up. We hear a lot about money. Um, you're going to hear Walter talk again and again and use very specific money, talking about the $10,000 check, $10,000, $10,000. Even when he talks to his son, uh, he tells Travis 50 cents, one dollar. You're going to hear specifically Walter talk a lot about specific money. And then, of course, the new house and garden, we're eventually going to be trying to move over into Mr. Lindner's neighborhood. Um, this idea or this dream that Mama uh, Younger has had about trying to get them into a home and out of this apartment. The new house and garden are certainly going to be a symbol of change here. So we'll be watching for those symbols and how they affect your characters. Thanks for stopping by, guys, for this introduction of A Raisin in the Sun. Come on back to the channel and watch some more videos if you like.